Yesterday, an unsolved case that gripped the nation for nearly two decades was finally solved. Back in 2005, 18-year-old Natalie Holloway went on a high school graduation trip to Aruba when she went missing. Eyewitnesses recount that Natalie was last seen alive on May 30th, 2005, leaving a bar with a man named Joran Vandersloot. He had been the primary suspect in Natalie's disappearance since the beginning, and in fact, he was arrested twice, both times he claimed to not be involved in any way. Her body was never found, and due to a lack of evidence, he was never actually charged. Although five years after Natalie's disappearance in 2010, federal prosecutors in Alabama charged Sloot with extortion and wire fraud after he tried to demand and solicit $250,000 from Natalie's mother, Beth. In exchange for the money, he tells her mother that I will tell you what happened to your daughter and where her body is. Talk about a smug prick. That's me putting it as nice as I can. At this point, the grieving mother, Beth, was desperate for information because at this point, five years had went by. And she had no lead, she had no updates, she still didn't even know where her daughter's body was, no one was charged with the crime, she had absolutely no closure. So she wires him $15,000 from her US bank account to his bank account in the Netherlands. She then had to wire $10,000 to her New York lawyer named John Kelly so he could deliver that money personally to Sloot in Aruba. The attorney Kelly travels to Aruba and meets up with Sloot where he exchanges the $10,000 to him and then Sloot says, Okay, this is where Natalie's body's buried. When it was all made up. In fact, he would then send an email to the victim's mother, Beth, taunting her saying, all the information you just paid for is worthless. Meanwhile, that same year in 2010, Sloot would be charged with taking the life of another young woman. Her name was Stephanie Flores, she was 21 years old, and she lived in Lima, Peru. So he's been in prison since 2010, serving a 28-year sentence for her murder. Now fast forward to June of this year, he's extradited from prison in Peru and brought to the US. So he could appear in court for a plea deal. And now, 18 years later, he would finally admit to what happened to Natalie the night of her disappearance. In court, he states that night the two were on the beach kissing when he was trying to take things to the next level and Natalie was not comfortable, she was not having it. So she refuses him. He doesn't listen, so she kicks him in the groin. And his little man ego can't take it, so he kicks her in her face as hard as he could. He quoted himself by saying, I kicked her in her face extremely hard, to the point that she's not conscious. And then he would pick up a cinder block and then would quote saying this in front of the victim's mother, I used it to smash her head in with it completely. He then dragged her body into the ocean and pushed her out to sea, and then walks home like nothing happened. The judge in the US would sentence him 20 years in federal prison for the murder of Natalie Holloway. 20 years to me doesn't sound long enough for taking a life of somebody. And then to try to extort money from the victim's mother, which I can only imagine what the family had to go through. So now he is going to be sent back to Peru to finish his sentence for killing Stephanie and his crimes of extortion and wire fraud that the US charged him with back in 2010 is being lumped into what he's currently serving. So he's serving that concurrently. And then on top of this, he also has a drug trafficking charge from 2001 for trying to smuggle in items to prison. At a news conference following the verdict, the victim's mother, Beth Holloway, would issue a formal statement saying, I can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case is solved as far as I'm concerned. It's over. It's over. Sloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. And if he didn't take her life, she would be 36 years old today. This man has killed two young women years apart. He clearly should never be released to the general public because there's nothing saying that he's not going to do it again. Meanwhile, take into account all the other horrible things that he's done. In the end, I am a big believer that everybody will pay a price. I hope he rots.